Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial about slow motion. Because today we are going to take a look on how to create our first composition within After Effects. So that means shooting different layers of one scene and then later on combining all of those with different masking techniques to create shots like this. screenshots like this. So just follow me into After Effects. So today is a bit special because we're not going to create one shot but three different ones which are all based on the same technique. So for all of those three different shots I had the camera completely fixed on a tripod and then I shot different versions of the scene and later on combined those shots with the help of masks. And this is what this tutorial is all about, masking techniques. So if you like what you see within the next minutes, just click that subscribe button because the more subscribers I have, the more tutorials I can do for you. And I really love doing those tutorials. So if you are completely new to After Effects and don't know that much about masks, you can still follow along this tutorial. But I would recommend you this video first that I've linked up here. This is just a five minute video that has a completely rundown of everything you will ever need to know about masks in After Effects. But so now let's get started. We will start with the first shot, which is the easiest one. And then we will just build upon what we've learned. So the first one is the shot with the castle. So let me drag that into a new composition and I'm just dragging that over that new composition icon and in that way it creates a new composition for us and what you can see here, the shot that I have filmed and I just made that jump and of course I didn't jump behind the building and now I just had to take care that I walk a straight line so that I can pass all the way behind the castle. Perfect. So now this is really easy. As I told you, I always create two different shots and then combine them. So in this case, the beginning of the shot is the second shot because I need a clean image of the castle. So I'll just duplicate this by hitting Ctrl D for duplicate. And then I just find a nice point in time where I can see the castle completely and just right click on the layer go to time, freeze frame. Now what I have here is a frozen frame. So what you can also do is just have your camera roll for another 10 or 15 seconds so you have a moving clean plate and not just a still one, but that should be fine for the sake of this tutorial. Next thing that I'm going to do is to mask out the castle. I quickly hide this so I can see where I'm jumping and I see that I just have to mask it out from around here. So I can enable it again and now just really quickly mask it out. And for a first version, I always really just go around everything really basic just to see if everything's working the way I want it. And remember, if you want to learn more about masks and masking techniques, you can just watch my five minute overview of everything you will ever need to know about masks and the link is in the description below. I really quickly masked it out and now I can also trim this layer to that point in time and when I hold down shift it snaps to the playhead here. And this is what we have so far and we directly see that we have to mask out a little bit more and let's take a look what we have done. Really really nice. So for this first shot, let me just give you one or two more tricks. The first one is how can we mask out that part here in the back without actually overdoing it? Because all those trees and leaves, we don't want to go into that manually. So let's take our freeze frame, we duplicate it, and now we want to get rid of the sky. But at first, of course, we want to get rid of the mask. I'm just going to solo this and mask out the part that's interesting for us because it's all those fine detail in here. So we can try it in two ways. Either we could key out the blue, let's just try it, and therefore we use key light. So this is the same technique as you would use for a sky replacement. Just take a blue color. And that's already all you need to do. And you see, now I am behind 
those trees. But I promised that I'm going to show you more than just one method. So what I did in my example, I just took the effect called extract, bring it onto the same mask because all the trees are darker than the sky, this should work. So this is all white values over here. We don't actually have white and the black values, we don't actually have black. So if we drag that out, you see all the brighter parts get keyed out and that should be quite good for the trees. And now you can take that lower point here and just feather this and then just work on it until you're satisfied. And the second tip that I wanted to give you is add some camera movement. So let's just pre-compose all of this by clicking on all of it or hitting Control A for all, and then hitting Control Shift C to create a new composition. Let's call this our castle, hit OK. And we can do that in two ways. First way, I wanna add a wiggle expression so that there's always constant small movement within the camera. And remember, this is something that I've done for the other two shots that I'm going to show you later. So exactly the same workflows. So I hit P to bring out the position, and now I want to give an expression to it. So an expression is some code that you add to a specific property, and then the code will define what the property is doing, which sounds a little bit complicated, but isn't at all, because this is an expression that you can always use. When you hold down the Alt button and click on a property, you can type in the code, and we want the position to wiggle. So just type in wiggle, and as soon as you do this, you see that it's automatically selected. Just hit enter. Now you're already in between the brackets. Now we need to tell how often it should wiggle. So let's just say it should wiggle like two times a second. And then we hit comma and how much should it wiggle? Maybe about 20 pixels horizontally and vertically. So let's type in 20. Then we just click away. And now when I scrub through this, you can see that it wiggles horizontally and vertically about two times a second which is a little bit too much almost for me. Let's just make it once and maybe just 10 pixel. And of course we have to scale it up a little bit so that it still fills out the frame. Perfect, now it already looks a little bit organic, but let's work on that a little bit more. Let's create a keyframe on the first frame for the scale as well as the position because we can add keyframes even though we have a wiggle expression on it. And for the beginning, as I'm coming in on that side, let's just scale it up and drag it over there. And now when I'm moving in, just quickly zoom out and bring it back into that position. Still zooming in a little bit on me because there's some action going on. So now I'm jumping and just when I'm landing, hit U. So we see all our keyframes and we set two new keyframes. And just after I landed, let's zoom in on me because that's the moment where you want to see expressions. And the cameraman is trying to keep me in the middle of the frame. So now let's take a look on what we have created. Really cool. And if you select all your keyframes and hit F9, or you just go to keyframe assistant and you go there by just right clicking on one of the keyframes, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And in that way, it will always ease into the keyframe. So it will slow down and move up. So you don't get that hard camera movements, but like really smooth, fluid ones. Perfect. So now we can close our first folder and take everything that we have learned and put it into the second one. So, because as you already see, here's a little bit more to it. So I'm just dragging out all of this into a new composition. When you add multiple clips at once to the new composition icon, it will always ask if you wanna have one composition or multiple compositions, and I only wanna have one, but I don't want to sequence the layers because then they would be played one after another, but I want them on top of each other. So I'll just click OK, and there we have it. You see, the top one is the clean plate of the table, which is again, just a still image, and I'm just dragging that out. Beneath is the table left, so it's me on the left holding the glass. And as you see, the important thing here is that I have another bottle standing there still all the time. So later on I have a reference where exactly to put the glass. 
And this is something that I'm doing all the time for shots like this. And of course, there's the right shot where I'm on the right side now. And as you see, the bottle is still in the same position and we are roughly doing the same before we even start doing something and bringing out a color correction. And as all of the shots beneath are filmed in the same way, this should be the same for all of them. So I'm getting out the Lumetri color. Go to the base correction, I can just click on auto, which already starts looking better. Just a little bit more contrast. But now let's start creating. And therefore we wanna have the clean plate beneath everything. And we wanna start with the left side. So again, I'm bringing out the mask tool and mask out this side. And if you have watched my five minute video where you will learn everything you will ever need to know about masks in After Effects, you will directly know how you can create like featherings around the mask. And I'm just quickly applying this. Okay, and now it just depends on how detailed you wanna roll out everything. Let's bring in the left and let's just duplicate the clean plate because now we have it once in the back for everything where we have a hole. And now I'm just going to hide this for now and draw a mask around the bottle and enable it again. And now the bottle is gone. You can still see some shadow, but again, if we feather this out a lot, you should hardly see it. Now it's just a timing issue where you will have to roto out the parts that you want to have on the left side or the parts on the right side. And a super useful tip is don't use glass, but maybe like a cup where you can't see through and don't use milk because then you can obviously see where you have your mismatch over here. And I learned that the hard way and later on I just wrote it out a little bit of the milk and positioned it on the right position. So everything looks just fine. And that's exactly the same workflow how I positioned me in the back and over here. I just shot me in that position and then took some time for some nice little roto. Whew, two of three shots done. So let's close this one. And before we close it, of course, you can pre-compose this, add a camera wiggle and some camera keyframes, and that will make it look way, way more authentic. Close this one, and let's just quickly take a last look at how I have created the intro to that tutorial. So let's just bring it onto the new composition icon. Again, we wanna create a single composition, and let's have a look on what we have here. I have filmed myself in a green suit once, just the body, once, just my legs, and of course I have a clean plate, which is at the moment a bit bigger because I shot it again in 4K. So to make this comp size, you can hit Control Alt F for fit. Now it's not only masking, but also keying. So let's start with our legs, and I'm just soloing this, bring out the key light effect, just play with the settings, and I'm just going to intermediate result here so that I don't have any spill correction because in that way it tries to reduce all green tones within my room here and I don't want that. Okay, when I hit Alt plus F, you can see that the mask isn't that good at the moment so you can just apply a choker, in that case a simple choker. And when I bring that out while still watching at the alpha view, so everything that's transparent is black and everything that's visible is white. So you can see what the choke mat is doing. When I go negative, it shrinks the black and when I go positive, it extends it. And in this way, you can just extend it a little bit. Hit Alt plus four again. And you see now I have a pretty good result. Next thing is again, just masking. So as I only wanna have my legs, I can go create a mask, set a keyframe for the mask path, and you guessed it, just manually position it. And I'm just doing this until here maybe. And in combination with our clean plate, you see that works just fine. Again, you see a little bit of the mask here. And this is just because I don't have a studio environment, but sunlight coming in from everywhere. So as soon as the cloud is there, it gets a little bit darker. Again, I can feather this and that should help. Or I can quickly bring out the levels effect and compensate for that really small change here. So I just brought out the gamma like 0 0.05. Okay, and now what you can do is bring out the body, go to the legs, copy all the effects except the levels and paste it on our body. And there we have just my body. Again, let's bring out a mask, hit M to see the mask path, click on that stopwatch and then you just have to work on your mask. 
And I'm also just doing the first few seconds here. When I unsolo this, you can see that this works pretty good. You still have a small fine line here, but you can get rid of that small line with tweaking the choker. And of course, you can also play with the key light settings. And again, feather the mask. There we have it. This is three really cool shots with three times the exact same technique. Just a little bit more advanced from step to step, but after all, we did three shots in no time at all, which is really, really perfect. And of course, if you do it on your own, just take a little bit more time, add a little bit more detail, think about adding like extra layers to it. You could, for example, just shoot your shoes and roll out the shoes. Or if you want to have the table shot, you can just put yourself like 10 times in the same shot and really make it super convincing. And as a last special tip, what I normally also try to do is when I'm done, I take the camera and I'm filming the movement that I have in mind without moving the frame, obviously. But then I'll just track the movement of the camera and apply that to my shot because in that way I have 100% realistic camera movement on a shot that was shot from a tripod. So really cool. That's also the end of this tutorial here and if you like what you see then just give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so I can do way more of those really really fun tutorials. And if you really made it until here and watched all of it then just let me know in the comments below which shot you like best. But now I wish you a lot of fun in shooting and masking in After Effects.